and welcome to Marketing Edge on TV, Nigerian's leading initiative in the business of brand management and the management of brand business. It is a 30 minutes wholesome package that comprises brand news, branding focus, and industry conversation, all in a mix encompassing thorough and in depth or aimed at promoting the brand idea. Amogale Abikele Makuru. Marketing Edge on TV, promoting the brand idea. Good to have you back. First, the Marketing Edge on TV is brand news where we bring you the latest developments around brands and in the field of marketing, advertising, and communication in Nigeria and around the world. Now on brand news. As the economic headwinds continue to weigh in on every sector, coupled with the inaccessibility to either the old Naira notes or the newly printed bank notes, Consumers who are in a state of despair and anguish all over the country have drastically reduced consumption due to dwindling purchasing power. Marketing Edge Market Insights revealed that most consumers have been unable to purchase even the basic commodities due to the staggering low cash flow. A visit to some supermarkets in town revealed low patronage even as most buyers struggle to make payments via their ATM cards. Some of them who decried the harsh economic realities exacerbated by the latest central bank's monetary policy or new Naira redesign complained that bank transfers have not been successful with many field transactions. Speaking exclusively to Marketing Edge, Osamede Wubawe, president of the Advertisers Association of Nigeria, ADVAN, while affirming that the business environment is now very challenging for brands, advised brand managers to be more proactive and innovative to be able to navigate the gloomy economic season. Latest industry report has revealed that influenza marketing is projected to increase by 23.4% in 2023 year on year, even as it is expected to sustain its growth into 2024 with an increased rate of 15.9% bringing the total projected revenue for influencer marketing spent this year to $6.16 billion. According to the B2B House, a research platform, influencer marketing grossed $4.99 billion in 2022, representing 27.80% increase from the previous year and will rake in $7.14 billion in 2024. Commenting on this, Please. Managing Director Please. Starcom Media Please. Perspectives, Mr. Jude Odia, affirmed that the use of influencer marketing for brand awareness and positioning will rise this year. You must keep winning businesses in the new areas. You can't stay on the old or the established areas because those ones, it looks as if that the pie is getting smaller and smaller. So I'm, my, my biggest learning is grow capabilities, new ones, in line with realities of the time. Because once you can solve problems for clients, you will remain relevant. The World Advertising Research Center, WARC, has revealed Generation Z, defined as 16 to 24s, is forecasted to spend 13 hours consuming media per day in 2023, slightly behind their 25 to 34 counterparts. According to the recent Global Ad Trends report, Finding Gen Z by WARC Media, Digital channels accounted for two-thirds of total media consumption by 16 to 24s in second quarter of 2022, higher than other adult age groups. The report also unveiled that social media aside music streaming dominates the remainder of Gen Z's media usage and is forecast to reach two hours per day in 2023, the highest of all age cohorts. With a population of 217 million, 79,601, according to Wodometa, as at August 25, 2022, Nigerians' youth population accounts for 70% of the population, which stands at a huge 151 million youth. About 70% of the population are under 30, and 42% are under the age of 15. Plural Media and Technologies Limited, a leading out-of-home company, has appointed Ruan Ajiferuke as executive director. As an executive director in Plural Media, Ruan will be responsible for leading the strategic business unit of the company and managing the day-to-day -day operations. 
It will also continue to build and nurture strong relationships with clients, partners, and other stakeholders. Proud to this appointment, he was the general manager of the company, a position he held for over a decade. Mr. Jufferuke is an experienced sales marketing manager with a demonstrated history of working in the marketing and advertising industry. He is skilled in marketing management, advertising, integrated marketing, marketing strategy, and outdoor advertising. As the marketing and advertising ecosystem continues to witness more technological solutions, media planning and buying experts, Rotimi Bankole, who is also the CEO of SBI Media Group, says he expects to see more groundbreaking innovations this year that will disrupt the entire ecosystem. According to him, with the latest innovation called ChatGPT, a generative pre-trained transformer, artificial intelligence is now a reality that industry players cannot afford to ignore. He said, we believe ChatGPT will be the most important innovation for 2023 and beyond. GBT model are trained on large data sets of human-generated text and use self-attention mechanism to analyze and understand the patterns and relationships within the text. This enables the model to generate coherent and human-like text when given a prompt or context. He added that for the marketing and advertising industry, ChatGPT is a game changer for brand engagement, consumer relationship management, product development, and even real-time advertising. But well, that was brand news. Next is branding focus after this break. Esther, you're late again. Esther. Oh. Morning, Esther. So Airtel, the smartphone network. Marketing Edge on TV, promoting the bright idea. Now on branding focus. The key to constantly shifting consumer behavior is search data and brands that have their finger on the ever-evolving trends can beat their rivals with it. However, all too often, such data is overlooked as a key weapon in brands' arsenal. As search engine optimization, SEO professionals are increasingly enhancing what chief marketing officer CMOs can learn from raw data. They are also identifying behavioral indicators, not just trading on the surface, meaning of user search terms. Through search, brands have access to a wealth of unbiased, unfiltered data about their audience. Not only can it tell CMOs what consumers are in today, it can also predict the trends of tomorrow. To make sense of the consumer's journey, brands need lots of behavioral data and marketers must start making such data part of that. Since the advent of digital, consumers have increasingly shopped in a non-linear fashion. In fact, their journey to purchase has not been a straight line. They might enter via one channel, drop out for a week at a time, only to return and buy via a completely different channel. Through identifying patterns in search history, customer terms and intentions can be mapped alongside consumer trends to gain insights into the behaviors that drive prospects to purchase. Research has shown this to be true across a whole range of sectors and sales opportunities. What's more, Google has continued on to this new era of search data value and is turning its focus to behavioral insights. The fundamental question is how reliable is this data and what's the best way of getting the best from it? With huge volumes of data on offer, it can be hard to ensure it is being utilized effectively. There are swaths of touch points and customer interactions to take into account and the data must be managed properly to achieve the best insights. Understandably, marketers can fall into the habit of starting with the data and looking for the insight. 
It's imperative, however, to define what the CMO wants to know first and then go looking for it within the data. And such data will help to provide unfiltered insight into what consumers really want. With our branding focus, next is industry conversation where we have interactions with distinguished personalities in the business of brand management. Well, today we have with us the founder and managing partner at Open Squares Africa, Mr. Faye Olubodu, after this break. Marketing Edge on TV, promoting the brand idea. Hello and welcome to Industry Conversation, a segment on Marketing Edge on TV, where we have interactions with distinguished personalities in the business of brand management. Well, today we have with us the founder and managing partner at Open Squares Africa, Mr. Faye Olubodu. So pleased to have you with us on Industry Conversation. You're welcome, sir. Thank you for having me. Such a great pleasure to have you. We know how much we've tried to have you on board, but we're glad to have you today. You're Thank welcome, you sir. Much. Thank you very much. So, sir, I would like you to give us an assessment of the integrated marketing communications industry last year. I think uh, from my observation of the industry, um, it's an industry that is struggling to reinvent itself. It's a struggle that has gone on for many years. Um, I think, first of all, the, the impact of the COVID for the, uh, in the year 2020 and 2021 sort of slowed down uh, certain structural changes that could have been made, even though the industry did leverage that to sort of change how they communicate with consumers. Uh, but I think if you look at last year, it, it, it looks like that reinvention is still ongoing, uh, but the industry is not there yet, you know. Uh, they are closer now than they were some uh, some prior years, but it's not you, you. The change is not visible and significant enough for us to say that we have a totally reinvented industry as a, as at yet. Okay, so what can you identify as some of the trends that shaped the business and practice of marketing communications last year? Um, I think ob obviously the the rapid uh, some key innovations in technology, uh, metaverse for instance, AI. Uh, at the end of the year into this year, the the whole thing with Chat GPT and, and all of that, uh, all of the technology that is happening around how consumers now present themselves uh, in a, in a virtual world and the implications of that for engagement. You have that going on. You see the rapid pace of content production both globally and locally, uh, across uh, platforms like the streaming platforms, for instance, uh, of course, the free platforms like YouTube, the Instagrams and all of that, uh, the, the pace and the volume of, of content creation is so incredible that it's, it's literally impossible today for anyone to consume all the content that is produced on a regular basis. Uh, a couple of years ago, it, it was said that um, the hours of content that a Netflix produces in a month, you will need to be on leave for about five years just to watch it. Wow. Now, it is in the midst of that content where the pace of con uh, that context, where the pace of content production is faster than the pace in which marketing communication agencies put out brand content and brand engagement platforms that, that you have to, you know, they have to compete with that. Mm -hmm. uh, so the, the, the issue then is how do they come out as distinctive enough? Uh, and more importantly, how do they remain memorable uh, enough? Because the consumers are, they, they are consuming so much content that unless your, your own content is distinctive and memorable enough, mm -hmm. they will forget it long before they can even take action that mm -hmm. you want them to take regarding the brands that you are positioning uh, 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 before them. And, and that's, that's, that's sort of like a subtle, uh, but very, 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 very real challenge that, that, that is there in the industry. Okay, you spoke about the challenges and I'm curious to find out how professionals are navigating that particular challenge, seeing that the attention span of consumers are also shortened and need yeah. this vast content that's out there for that's consumption. Up. So tell us how are practitioners actually navigating um, I, I think a number of practitioners are beginning to think in, in long form uh, content. They're beginning to think more as, um, you know, previously the practice will say that they are doing TVC, they are doing radio scripts and all of that. That sort of language is gradually being faded out. Uh, people are thinking more about how do we take the brand proposition 
and communicate it in, in different, in various formats of content. Uh, and, and a few agencies, are at, at least from the work that I, I, I see um, outside, are trying to gradually enter, enter that, that space. Um, and then more and more, um, practitioners are trying to become like part of the consumer's conversation, you know, because they are living their lives. Unless you join their conversation, you, you won't really be relevant to them. Mm -hmm. And unless you can enter the world of, of content that they are consuming uh, uh, um, regularly, you also may not be memorable to them. You know, so, uh, but not, not the entire industry, I won't say I've gotten there yet, but you can see every now and then that some people are trying, some agencies are trying to do something al along that line. I think it's the right way to go. Okay, you, yeah. you talked a bit about touch points for yeah. consumers, how practitioners can get in that space as yeah. a consumer to be able to communicate to them effectively. But we've seen in the last 12 months, an increasingly, you know, um, penetration of technology yeah. in the marketing ecosystem. Yeah. Uh, can you tell us how that has enabled practitioners to function effectively in terms of getting to where consumers are and, and getting that attention? Yeah, I, I, I think it's, it's helped a lot for those that have been able to leverage it. You look at, for instance, how uh, mobile technology is being combined with activation, for instance, uh, how mobile technology and also um, um, is being is being leveraged as part of sort of the path to purchase when it even comes to outdoor, for instance. You know, uh, um, something as basic as putting a QR code on a piece of outdoor mm -hmm. uh, creates an opportunity for engagement, especially if you then link it with a purchase opportunity that can happen on the mobile phone. So you shorten the path to purchase uh, uh, using using technology. Um, it's not at scale yet. I would say that's what is missing. But I've seen some bits of work that have been done using that kind of combination of different uh, fundamental platforms of marketing, communications, consumer engagement, and then bringing in technology to, to link all of that together. I think the key would be for how the industry as a whole can use more of technology, use more of data to shorten the path to purchase. Uh, for their clients and be able to do that at scale. Uh, uh, that, that, would, that would really be, be, be the key there. Okay, so talking about the need for consumers, I mean, um, marketing professionals now, yeah. to improve on their technological capabilities, um, what would you project to see in terms of new innovations in the MarTech industry this year? I, I, I think, I think we, we are going to see something that is mobile. Um, it will be it will be interesting to see an agency that does mobile only work. Mm -hmm. You know, because mobile is a platform that we're yet to fully optimize, and every day new technology is being deployed for consumers to engage generally on the on 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 the on the mobile on the mobile phones, mobile devices, and all of that. Uh, and I think that more and more um, um, practitioners will begin to shift to creating work that is not just mobile first but you know, ultimately work that is mobile only. Uh, and I'm not talking about engagements with just creating video content that you put on social media. That's part of it. Uh, but people do a lot more on the mobile or on mobile devices than just consume content, right? They transact there, they engage, they build communities, right? Uh, uh, and they, they, they drive movements from there. Now, how can, how can uh, practitioners begin to help their brands to engage in that in that ecosystem as a whole, that's something I think we'll begin to see more and more of uh, uh, as this year progresses. Okay, talking about consumer engagement, um, we see that inflation rate is rising, yeah. and um, clients are looking towards cutting advertising spend or their budget on you know yeah. marketing campaigns. How can practitioners optimize marketing budget to effectively engage with consumers? I think that you know the the solution to that really is is something that um, the industry has been trying to do for a long time, uh, and really I think the solution is you you have to put skin in the game. Practitioners should be able to go to clients and say, we don't think you should cut your marketing spend for so so reasons, 
uh, because actually you may need to spend more in your marketing to stimulate more growth. Uh, um, but we are willing to put skin in the game, uh, which means practitioners need to begin to introduce performance metrics into the equation and say, okay, what we're going to do for you will deliver on so 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 fronts. Uh, and we're willing to tie a portion of our income or our earning to being able to work with you to deliver this. If we don't bring the performance conversation into, in, into that whole discussion, then it will be difficult to, to say to clients, don't cut your budgets. Because you have to tell them, why should I not cut it? They are also trying to, to protect their bottom line, isn't it? Yeah. Unless you can show them that uh, uh, what, you're, what you're going to do for them will actually stimulate growth for them and you're willing to put some skin in the game. I think that's when that conversation can advance. And more so, um, consumer insight is very important in achieving that. Yes. And that brings us to the issue of data availability. Yeah. Now, do you think we have enough data to achieve this? I think, I think we have, we have we, I won't say we, we have data, but let me qualify that. Uh, unlike other developed markets where there, uh, there's existing secondary data that you could purchase readily, we don't have that kind of secondary syndicated data here on a, on a large scale. But a lot, of, a lot of clients have budgets for data, for gathering data and so on. They spend quite a lot of their marketing budget on that. Where the gap is, is you know, practitioners, IMC practitioners being comfortable with data. Traditionally, the agency world is, leans more towards creativity. And sometimes there's a paradigm that creativity is the opposite of data. Actually, data st should stimulate creativity, right? Uh, and so where the gap, has been, where the gap is, 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 is agencies being comfortable with data and then having the capability to have meaningful conversations around the data that the client already has and being able to bring fresh perspective to the data that client already has. So it's not so much that we don't have a lot of data. We don't have as much data as developed countries, yes. But the data we have, there's a capability gap in our ability to mine insights from that data and then build consumer engagement initiatives from, from, from those insights. Okay. I would like to also find out what you expect to see in terms of the trends that will shape the marketing communications industry this year. I think for the first time this year we challenge the business model of the of the agencies because if you if you look at the trend typically when there's political campaigns and all of that there's huge spending all right uh, there's discretionary cash everywhere and agencies that are able to get into the into the foray they tend to get a lot of a lot of free cash which then allows them it gives them enough runway and what has tend to happen over the years is that when the agencies have a lot of cash from political campaigns, they take their eye off innovation. Mm -hmm. they, don't, they don't reinvent themselves. Mm -hmm. That wrong way, they just use it to sustain their current model and all of that. This year has been different. We don't have a lot of spending. Mm -hmm. Cash is not flowing around. The candidates are going grassroots and all that. They are not throwing money around like before. So what that, what is, what that will do is that the economic recession that will come is going to hit agencies harder. Uh, than previous uh, election years and they will be forced to really really think about whether their business model is sustainable or they need to truly invent themselves now because they don't have the same buffer uh, that they used before. to that they used to have before yes and um, last year we witnessed a transition of um, the advertising regulatory body, mm. um, the change of name and uh, new alcohol law yeah. and a lot of regulations last year. What would be your thoughts so far for the Advertising Regulatory Council of Nigeria, all that they've done in the last one year? Yeah, I, I think they've done incredible work. There's a freshness to it. Uh, uh, Dr. Fadolapo is, is someone I've had occasion to work with when, where, when I was on the AAAN uh, executive board. Um, and, and, you know, it brings a freshness in his approach. I think, however, there needs to be, uh, there's room for improvement. Uh, obviously, it's, it's just the journey is just beginning. I think a lot of the regulations and, and new policies that have that have been passed are very tactical in nature. Uh, they are more symptomatic. You know, they're trying to address 
uh, some of the some of the symptoms and the the peripheral issues that is going on. I think some of the policies now need to go deeper uh, and address the more uh, entrenched institutional issues that actually are the ones that are the leading factors producing some of these other uh, or, or other things that we're seeing that they are now trying to regulate. Um, um, I hope they will be able to take on those issues this year because they, that would that would inform having tough conversations, but not just with clients because now a lot of the policies have been client facing policies, right? Mm -hmm. uh, but the issues are not just client issues alone. The real entrenched institutional issues are agency issues, uh, and and in order to deal with those issues, there has to be very they have to have frontier conversations with the CEOs of those agencies so that those things can be addressed. So um, I, I believe that that will be the next thing that, that they need to confront this year. Okay. Thank you so much, sir, for your time on Marketing Edge on TV. Thank you very we much. We hope to have future conversations with you if your Thank time will let us. And that's it on Marketing Edge on TV. Do well to join us same time next week for another interactive time. I'm Ogali Abikele Mapur. See you again. On the 25th of February, Nigerians will go to the polls to elect President Muhammadu Buhari's successor, as well as the 109 senators and 360 members of the House of Representatives who will make up the 10th National Assembly. On the 11th of March, 28 out of 36 states will choose their next executive governors, and the 993 members of the state houses of assembly across the country will be decided. With over 93 million registered voters, Nigeria is on course for seven cycles of uninterrupted general elections since the return of democracy in 1999. Join me on TVC News for the countdown to the February 25th national election and March 11th state election for all the updates and analyses you need to know. Every weekday at 6 p.m. Never miss a moment. Instant breaking news from all over the globe. Live streaming of your favorite programs delivered directly to you. Watch anytime from anywhere on your mobile or smart devices. Download the TVC News app today. Available on Google Play and Apple Store. In the month of February, 4th of February is World Cancer Day. 6th of February is International Day of Zero Tolerance for Female Genital Mutilation, while 11th of February is dedicated to women and girls in science. On the 12th of February, it's International Day Against the Use of Child Soldiers, also known as Red Hand Day. On the 20th, it's World Day of Social Justice. By the 24th, it will be one year since the Russia-Ukraine war broke out. Stay tuned to TVC News as we bring you in-depth reports and analysis of these events. It's been three decades of statehood in Yobe State, coupled with steady growth and development in all areas. A decade-long Boko Haram insurgency has also hampered the steady rise to greatness in the pride of the Sahel. But it's time for continuity, consolidation and innovation in Yobe State. Watch as Governor May Malabuni builds on progress made by past administrations and breaks new grounds with fresh projects and programs on Impact UB. Impact UB on Saturdays at 8.30 p.m. and Thursdays 12.30 p.m. on TVC News. Join us. Doubt and fear doesn't occur at the canvas. It shows in the canvas. It shows the conation of raw ether material slapped, stroked and molded at a pace provided by the doubt and fear. Every move weigh in the struggle of one to the other, merging the past to the present, brush strokes of colors seen but not known. For when the wailing stops, the pieces settle down in abject beauty erected for a century of a century. Speaking, advocating, protesting as the arts are meant to be.